So today I'll be doing a lot of streaming actually. First, I'll start off by continuing off with the, um, the little Pokemon. I mean, not Pokemon, yeah, Pokemon like game. And then we'll be moving on to a quick parter of um, what's it called? The, um, the Pathfinding game. And then I'll spend the rest of the day trying to get as much done for the Mario, the Assetless Mario one. Now, one thing that bothered me last time is if we play the game, aside from the fact the enemy doesn't move, is if I attack and I press the attack move, we attack straight away. And that's something I don't want within the game. I want the uh, the skills to queue, and at the end of everyone's choice, only then we'll attack. But let's first add the enemy in. So this section has to completely disappear. We'll add this in here. So how we route the player to his the input controller, we will route the enemy to the battle controller. Where are we? Instead. So what we'll do is, so we already know it's a character to manage at slot zero, and we'll just delete it. Wait, are we, do we have the character, are they the type of character? Yeah, they are a type of character control, so we don't even have to get a component. And what we'll do is, we'll just set this to select. Oh, so we need to change this to select an action. So let's make a function here, public void select action, like so. And in here, or should we just make this more accessible instead? Either way, it doesn't matter, does it? So we'll just do state. What is it called? Is it battle state? What did I call them? It's been so long since I did this. Um, I just didn't have the time. This is current state is equal to, and we'll just do select action like this. Now, what this will do is it will. So this will be the enemy selecting an action out. Of possible skills. For now, we'll just make it very basic. We'll keep adding more as we go on. Um, okay, let's just call select action here. And then this will, of course, switch to the weight. And in here, we'll just queue a random attack in. Let's see how we are queuing, uh, adding up attacks, because I don't remember anymore. Um, Oh, so we'll have to remove this character from the pool, of course, uh, at the end of the action. Um, what do we have here? What happens when the player selects the action? Uh, so we have the panel. Let's just press a button. So I press this. Let's pause this. What do we have here? We have the moves button script, which does what? Use skill. Okay, so we run the use function of the attached skill. Let's open a skill function now. I probably should have looked at the code before I started the stream, so I know more or less what I'm doing. Oh, okay. So what we essentially do is we just pick a skill and then we use the skill. So I'm just going to drag this to the other screen and bring our character controller in here because I want to see better what's happening. So here, what we'll do is we'll just do integer random skill, and that's going to be equal to um, character in play. We should have our skills. Yeah, so we'll do random.range, like so, and we'll put a zero, and we'll do a character dot, dot length. Although, that is going to be quite problematic, isn't it? Because what if our enemy doesn't have exactly four skills? Let's have a look at the character, both characters, and see what they have. So can they have empty skills? Yes, they can have an empty skill. 
that's a problem. Our enemy doesn't have any skills to start off with. And we do instantiate the skill to be something. So we'll change how skills operate slightly. So we don't uh, instantly expect the player to have this many skills. Did I just crash Visual Studio? Oh my god, I just crashed Visual Studio. By connecting it across. God damn it. Come on, go away. Okay, whatever. Uh, while we're at it, let's go into... So we are looking for characters in play. So it's going to be character on character. There you go. I mean, this script... Thank you, Visual Studio, for crashing on me. Okay, so what we do here is we preset skills to be four of a size. Mm, but we kind of want to do that always anyway. So what I'll do instead is I'll populate each skill with an empty. Should I populate them with an empty or not? Um, I'm just going to change this to a list. This is no longer going to be a array of skills. It's going to be a list of skills. Because that way, it's not going to throw us any. We can, that, that way, we can add uh, dynamically. So we don't have to stick to. There we go, like so. Um, if we go back, there we go. Now we have some errors that we need to fix. So we'll just do dot count instead. Now let's make sure our enemy actually has skills when he um, losing. So let's go back into our world scene and just modify how the enemies work. I'm pretty sure that should be somewhere in. Scriptable objects, maybe. Where are we? Scriptable object characters. So we have several characters, and none of them have any skills by default, which is wrong. They should have default skills. So when we battle them, we give them some kind of a skill. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our enemy character script from the scriptable. What do we have here? Yep. Let's open this script. And what we're just going to do is we're going to create a new field for the skills. Encounter system. So we will have a private. Private, and we're going to call it skill, and that's going to be the default skills. Of course, that's going to be a list. And we want to get an accessor to it, which we're going to get it, not set it, like so. Now that we have this, is when we encounter, well, now we can attach some skills to our characters, which we will. So let's select every single skill. Let's lock this and go into skills, give them all skill A and skill C like so. Unlock it. Come on, unlock. Now that we have this, when we encounter, all we have to do is just move over those skills uh, across. Well, actually, no. So our enemy will already have all of the data passed through correctly. So rather than using skills of a character, we'll just do... Do we do some kind of a calculation here? Yeah, so we'll do character. 
dot uh, default skills dot count. And we can actually keep our other code as an array, I mean, as an array like we did it before. So let's just go back. There we go, like so. Because now that's no longer an issue. So now we select a random skill, like we've wanted it to. And now we have to add it the same way we are adding our player movements into our system. So if we go into our skill, we basically have to do use on that very specific skill. And the target is just going to be the other character. How do we select? Well, there we go. where are we? So if we go into our player input, no, it's going to be the bottom one. <laughs> oh, there's so much classes. OK, where are we? So we pass in. Ah, so this is what we use basically when we call the skill. And that's kind of what we want to call in here as well. So we will just do a, a characters in play character dot character dot default skills at random skill let's just tap this out let's put this in what does this do uh okay so it just used uses that okay so we'll just do dot use and what's gonna happen here is we um need to pass in this character and the one we are targeting so we'll just do I guess this, and then for the other one, we need to have access to the battle manager, which should be maybe as an instance, which will save me a lot of work. It is an instance, so we'll just do battle controller dot instance dot. What would we like it to be? Oh, current state. Um, what does this do here? Oh, it's going to, so it's going to be player, not player two, rather than player one. Okay, so if we go into a battle controller, we will actually make an accessor for this field as well, as we didn't have it. Whoa, that gave me errors. There we go, like this. And we'll do player one on characters at zero for now. There we go, like so. And with this, now we the enemy targets the player. Uh, and of course, they will deal damage as well. And then we just change to our weight for now. Of course, that's just going to be slightly changed in a minute, but for now, it's good enough. So just go do it. And we will change this to weight for now. We also want to remove this from our actions. So how do we remove them again? Ooh, I need to go back to doing this because more often. Because I am forgetting how half of this code works. OK, so when a player selects an action, well, we just do Look, take damage. Okay, that's okay. That's also okay. Okay, where are we? So we just need to remove at the current at the list. So where are we? So before we do that, we will just do battle controller dot instance dot man to manage at zero dot 
I mean, you just need to wait. Wait, is this Celeste or what? Da -da -da. So confused. Dot remove at zero, like so. So now we've removed the character, we changed to wait. And now the enemy should attack as well. It's not the best uh, solution, but it's good enough for this. Let's go now into our battle scene. Press play. So if I press attack, I attack. And then our enemy doesn't. Which is not what we should be seeing right now. Let's see where the game is stuck at. So apparently each character did do their attack. Let's just do book dot log this. Here it happened. Might actually have to renew the entire structure later. So we called this one, twice, three times. I uh, don't know why it's being called three times though. Oh, we did attack. Oh, so wait. So it actually did everything correctly. The only thing that it didn't do is, so now, okay, so we've pushed through. Yeah, so this is actually all called okay. There is nothing wrong. It's just that the weight in the battle controller has to be different. So this actually has to check if we have any So what they actually had to do was go back to select action instead after we finished with our enemy, rather than wait. Um, so here is, we should go back to select action, because we finished the turn, and that means the enemy has finished moving. So if I do this, if I do this, oh, and we get an error. Yeah, straight away an error from our character B. Which one's our character? Where are we? At line 55 of battle character. Yeah, I believe this is because we're just not running this in a core team. So we will end up. Oh, wow. No. What have I done? Um... So current state is going to be set to wait, however, our battle state. So battle controller dot instance dot where are we? This will have to be done here. Dot current state is equal to there we go, like this. There we go. Now this is how it was meant to go. So we attack. Surprisingly, the enemy does no damage. I wonder why. Oh, are some moves not doing damage in general? Water does no damage. Great. Now it does. OK, so now they are actually all attacking with their moves. Which is great. So now that we know that they both attack, now the biggest problem here is currently we, we're doing it wrong. And what I mean by that is we are attacking one after one. And that's kind of how it would look like in a game like Final Fantasy. But in a game like Pokemon, we actually store, uh, we would need to store the skills instead before we execute them oh, one by one. I'm just going to prepare for this system now, and then in the next part, I'll uh, finish working on this system. So what we'll essentially have to do is, because uh, I want to reread the code, because I'm taking way too long here. So we'll have a skill, and this is going to be all queued uh, skills. 
basically what this will do instead, it will just queue all of the skills into our system instead. Um, so instead of straight away doing damage, we'll just add to the skill and then we'll loop through every single skill and execute it one by one based on every enemy. Because then we can have things like priority skills, a skill that goes uh, uh, instead of first the other skill, regardless of the speed, etc. Yeah, but yeah, that would be it for this one. I'm going to just pause the stream and then two minutes I'll be doing the camera for the other series. Okay, where is the streaming?